This week on ANN, Adventists welcome renewed focus on blasphemy and apostasy laws. A visually impaired Adventist senator from Jamaica is elected to the UN Committee for Persons with Disabilities. And later, the Global Adventist Internet Network takes its international conference online. These stories and more coming up. Thank you so much for joining us this week. First in the news, a resolution calling for the worldwide repeal of blasphemy, heresy, and apostasy laws passed the U.S. House of Representatives on December 7th. The new resolution shines a spotlight on what one Seventh-day Adventist advocate calls an ongoing global religious freedom tragedy. Associate Director for Public Affairs and Religious Liberty at the Adventist Church Headquarters, Bettina Cross, welcomed the passage of the resolution and said it rightly condemns efforts by any government to define or enforce a religious orthodoxy. Some 84 countries have laws that forbid blasphemy or restrict a person's right to change or renounce their religious beliefs. In some places, these laws are harshly enforced and carry severe penalties for anyone stepping outside the religious norms of the country. According to Krauss, who worked with a diverse group of civil society organizations in Washington, D.C. to help pass the resolution, this category of laws is especially prone to abuse with accusations often targeting minority religious communities. She said there are countless examples of these laws being weaponized against individuals as a way of settling personal quarrels, which may have very little to do with religion. House Resolution 512 Against Blasphemy, Heresy, and Apostasy was sponsored by House Representative James Raskin and co-sponsored by a bipartisan group of 42 House members. The resolution calls on the U.S. government to make the repeal of blasphemy, heresy, and apostasy laws a priority in all relationships between the United States and countries with such laws, and it urges the release of all prisoners currently imprisoned under these laws. A similar resolution is still pending in the U.S. Senate. For more information, visit Adventist.news. Floyd Morris, a member of the Andrews Memorial Seventh-day Adventist Church in Jamaica, was elected a member of the United Nations Committee for Persons with Disabilities. The election took place on Monday, November 30, 2020. Morris, who is visually impaired, is the first Jamaican to be elected to the committee, a body of independent experts who monitor the implementation of the Convention for the Rights of Persons with Disabilities by the states and countries who are signatories. He was among nine persons elected to the committee to replace those whose terms are due to expire at the end of December. Morris is member of the Jamaican Senate, Caribbean Community Special Rapporteur in, on Disability, and a lecturer and director of the Center for Disability Studies at University of the West Indies. Morris is well known in Jamaica for his fight for the disabled community and a source of inspiration to them in attaining a high level of success, despite being blind from his teenage years. He has been credited with the passing of several bills and programs that have and still positively impact the disabled community. The 51-year-old senator created history in Jamaica's parliament when he became the first visually impaired person to be appointed president of the Jamaican Senate in May 2013. In commending Senator Morris, then president of the Adventist World Church, Pastor Ted Wilson described him as a modern-day Joseph who the Lord has given an unusual opportunity to witness in so many ways and who represents Jesus and his precious church in arenas and areas that most of us do not have a daily connection. On November 1, Colonel Andrew Harewood was promoted to general officer upon accepting the position of deputy chief of chaplains for the United States Army Reserve. This makes him the first Adventist and the first African-American chaplain to become a general in the Army Reserve. With the promotion, he is the third Adventist chaplain in the U.S. military to reach the general rank. Harewood is one of three deputy chiefs of chaplains for the Army, each individually representing active duty, National Guard, and the Reserve, who report to the Army chiefs of chaplains. The Army chaplaincy leadership team oversees the religious support services within the military branch that are carried out in more than 220 countries and territories throughout the world. 
Harewood is the deputy who oversees the work of 700 chaplains in the Army Reserve, serving nearly 190,000 Army Reserve soldiers, their families, and Army Reserve civilians. He exercises his role from the Army's headquarters in the Pentagon, located in Arlington, Virginia. Among his many duties, he oversees strategy, plans, policy, and resources for the Office of the Chiefs of Chaplains. Harewood has been in the Army for more than three decades and has served as a chaplain for the military branch for 25 years. His highly decorated career has included active military work and civilian pastoral assignments within the Adventist Church. Prior to his previous position, he was a senior pastor of the Ephesus Seventh-day Adventist Church in Harlem, New York, for four years. Even in that time, however, he still performed military duties as command chaplain for 80th Training Command, which manages all Army training schools. His formal promotional ceremony will take place Friday, December 11, by invitation only at the historic Fort Myer Chapel, located on the grounds of Arlington National Cemetery in the U.S. state of Virginia. The Seventh-day Adventist Church in West Venezuela sprang into action to help hundreds of families affected by the torrential rains that overflowed rivers and flooded communities in the state of Tachira last month. Many municipal districts were left without power and adequate potable water, local authorities said. Communication for the Southwest Venezuela Conference, Ever Becerra, said some of the first communities to be impacted by the rains were in the Rubio community, where 3,345 persons were affected in the first week of the flooding. But estimates of the affected families surpassed 10,000. Another 750 people were affected, including 50 Adventist families in the Santa Ana community and several neighboring communities. The Adventist Development and Relief Agency, or ADRA, in Venezuela has distributed some 3,030 food bags throughout the most affected communities, thanks to the assistance of 200 church member volunteers. Food items included non-perishable foods, arepas, plantains, vegetables, clothing items, and more. In addition, a group of professionals offered free medical services to more than 600 persons. Church leaders in West Venezuela said additional assistance will continue to be provided during the next few weeks to those affected in the Chira. The church recently distributed school supplies and toiletry kits to dozens of children in the affected communities through a special one-day vacation Bible school activity there. Back in 2013, Heroes the Game generated more than 10 million minutes of interaction with exciting stories from the Bible. Heroes was a pioneer game that opened the doors for many other Adventist games. Now, after eight years, the Seventh-day Adventist Church and its official TV channel, Hope Channel, is set to release Heroes 2. You can pre-order the new game on the Apple App Store and Google Play. Three years ago, a study on the most searched terms on Google relating to the Bible showed that every 30 days, there are more than 250,000 Google searches around the world for Bible trivia, Bible games, and Bible quizzes. The study showed of all the game genres, people are searching for Bible trivia more than any other kind. For the last few years, an international team has been working to create Heroes 2, an entirely new Bible trivia game. Players will start their journey with Adam and Eve, the first heroes. As the heroes ask questions about their life, players start accumulating experience points. The more experience points a player has, the more heroes are unlocked. Players start with Genesis and end up in Revelation with John, the son of thunder. Each game consists of 12 questions and the score is based on how quickly a player can answer them. At first, the questions are easy, but as the game progresses, the questions get harder. With Heroes 2, players will be able to challenge family and friends by sharing a simple link. They will have to play and answer the same exact 12 questions to try and get a better score. Heroes 2 will be available in four languages, English, Portuguese, Spanish, and French, with the expectation of new languages being added shortly after the release. Along with the Heroes 2 game in 2021, Hope Channel will also be providing Bible studies. Church leaders and the game creators hope Heroes 2, the Bible trivia game, will help children youth, and adults become better acquainted with amazing stories of the Bible. Some players are being invited to become beta testers and start their adventure soon. 
anyone can apply at heroesbibletrivia.org. Coming up, Adventist communicators recently came together online for the 2020 GAIN Conference. We'll be right back after the break. We may look, pray, read, think, worship, sing, and share differently, but we all look forward to the Sabbath, and we all look forward to the future when Jesus will come again. With this message in mind, we arrived at a core component for a new identity system, the creation grid. Regardless of what or where you are designing, you can always find information to help you communicate that we are all Seventh-day Adventists. Welcome back. From November 29 to December 3, communicators from all over the world gathered online during the 2020 GAIN conference. Under the theme of I Will Go Exploring Our Digital Future, attendees learned about new tools, heard testimonies, and shared ideas of how to reach people with the gospel. Communication Director for the Global Seventh-day Adventist Church, Williams Costa Jr. has more. More than 3,000 attendees from 113 countries with content broadcasted in four languages. This was GAIN Online, the global meeting of the communicators. Adventist communication has advanced and diversified greatly in the past decade. This is the impression we have when we following the GAIN Conference, an event that in 2020 was held virtually. Transmitted in English, Spanish, Portuguese and French, GAIN presented many initiatives the Church is promoting so that these ideas can be shared online more frequently. One of the presentations was the Meetup app an Adventist social media app that has supported church planting work. Another was the Center for Online Evangelism.org platform, which has helped to train digital missionaries. GAIN also showcased the website vividfaith.com, a service that began to be tested in May and whose purpose is to connect people with opportunities to serve in the world mission field. May 1, 2020, in the middle of the COVID lockdown, Vivid Faith entered its beta testing period. And what a blessing it has been to watch the challenges of a pandemic turn into providentially orchestrated opportunities. Also coming soon, the Deep Vision project from the Ukraine a virtual environment that can be used to offer courses and train and develop educational and spiritual mentoring programs. As Seventh-day Adventists, we all would like to share high-quality, meaningful content with our friends and family. The content that uplifts and inspires. The content that leads to Jesus. In a way, the COVID-19 health crisis ended up accelerating some communication initiatives that were already being implemented. For example, just before the pandemic hit the United States, Hope Channel created a digital content distribution system that is now playing a strategic role. Just three days before pandemic hit, we created a new department of digital distribution to create programming in the digital space, allowing us to fully embrace New digital investments events. were made in the audiovisual field in several regions of the world. In Romania, Hope Discover is betting on a video production technique for YouTube that consists of teaching the Bible using modern graphic resources. Această tehnică se numește chroma key. Este însă o tehnică existentă încă de la apariția primelor filme și este popular cunoscută ca imagine dublă. De-a lungul anilor, această tehnologie a evoluat, ajungând odată cu era digitală să creeze o mulțime de posibilități și mai ales să permită creatorilor de filme să-și folosească imaginația la maximum. However, one of the biggest productions presented in this edition of GAIN 
was the Uncertainty Project, which involves more than 30 new productions and material developed over nine months. In addition to a short film, a documentary, a book, also a series of 10 stories recorded in 10 countries will be made available. Minha mente e meu coração estão em batalha constante. Do que você está fugindo? Parece que alguma coisa se quebrou aqui dentro. Eu forço o um sorriso. Eu forço o contato. Tudo que eu vou fazer, eu repasso mil vezes na minha mente. Ministries. Ministries coordinated by volunteers from local churches were also highlighted, such as Hope Lives 365. About seven years ago, young Matt Gray, an air traffic engineer and member of the Adventist Church Pastor Mark Finley attends in the United States, decided to start recording the evangelist's sermons and use optimization techniques to boost the content on YouTube. As a result, some videos have already more than one million views. What I'm doing is just very carefully thinking about how we're going to present the information to an actual audience. I'm thinking about an audience, who they are, what they think about, how can we present something to them in a way that they're going to be interested in it? And there's a lot of different things we could talk about, um, but um, we can see that it works. A trend from the recent years, and that has gained strength in the context of the pandemic, is the use of freelance and contract workers. For a very long time in this country, especially, we've had, for white collar work, we have said that when you work, you go to an office, that the office is a place where work gets done. That right. was the only option for a very long time. Freelancing is an opportunity and a career choice for life. Just in 2020 alone, 12% of the entire workforce moved to freelancing. 96% of those people that moved during COVID say they're staying. Today, the Adventist World Headquarters has a number of freelance employees who provides service to the organization on various projects. It is not yet a standard adopted by the church, but an alternative to meet the current need. In fact, this is how the biblical game Heroes is being developed, a project that involves 20 freelancers from different areas and regions of the world. Launched in game this year, the new version of Heroes, Heroes 2, is a game that now is available in Android and iOS operating systems, but is still in the testing phase. For this purpose, 10,000 downloads were released in the first phase. Heroes 2. What imagery comes to your mind when you hear the word hero? probably Superman or Spider-Man, right? Because of pop culture, we have linked the word hero to someone who can yield special powers. One of the main differences of the updated version is that now, in addition to responding to the challenges of the game, users can ask biblical heroes about topics for which they have been searching for answers on the internet, like death, suffering, etc. Heroes 2 also comes with a series of 20 Bible studies adapted for this audience. The expectation is to reach gamers around the world who use internet to play online. In addition to talking about innovation, there was also a space to reflect on the future of communication. Undoubtedly, it will be increasingly digital and robotic, but there are things that machines can't never do, which challenges the church to invest in technology without dehumanizing evangelism. Coming up, 
David Trim is here for this week in Adventist history. But up next, Adventist Mission shares the story of an Adventist volunteer in Albania. Hi, Bill. How are you? Are you okay? Dear VL, I can't even remember how long we've been staying at home now because of this virus. For now, <laughs> it's just nice to hear your voice and see your face. Nothing beats playing outside in the dirt, though. Which reminds me. Are your hands clean? Yeah! Mommy and Daddy says not a lot of kids get COVID-19. But it's always nice to be extra safe. We should wash our hands. Washing our hands protects us, but it also keeps us from spreading the virus. In case we touch something dirty, let's always be clean and safe, okay? Love, Joey. Welcome back. Leilani was nervous when her plane touched down in Albania. But now she knows the joy of being an Adventist volunteer. Adventist Mission has more. Leilani took a year from studying at her university to become a student missionary. She knew she wanted to serve overseas, but didn't know where God wanted her to go. I was just looking for a position I could teach English in a country that I had never heard of. So I prayed to God, asked Him to give me a place I had never been to. And now I'm here and it's the best decision I've ever made. <laughs> Leilani was nervous when her plane touched down in Albania. But now, just one month later, she's discovering both the joys and challenges of being an Adventist volunteer. She's volunteering at this kindergarten, which is run by the humanitarian organization ADRA Albania in cooperation with local church leaders. The school was started with the belief that investing in the community's education will create happy, healthy children and families, contributing to a stronger society. I'm the kindergarten ESL teacher. I teach three classes and all of them are in English. Her classroom is bursting with energy as the kids engage in fun activities. Being a volunteer is not always simple or easy. Leilani has had to adapt to a new language and culture. When she arrived, she couldn't speak Albanian. And then I come here and I don't understand anything and everybody's translating for me. Another challenge is being so far from her family and friends in the United States. But the loneliest times have only reinforced her trust in God. My spiritual life has definitely become like stronger just being here for a month. Like I didn't even expect it. God is there every single day. <laughs> I came here and my first day here, I was just like, what am I doing here? But through this whole process, I've just got, you can see God. And so just being here, I'm just like, whoa, you do have me, like you do take care of me. And it just shocked me and it's pretty cool. It's actually really cool to know somebody's watching out for you. Please pray for Adventist volunteers like Leilani who have accepted God's call to serve. You too can visit AdventistVolunteers.org to see a list of current volunteer opportunities. Thank you for supporting the Seventh-day Adventist Church's work around the world. Watch this and other mission stories online by visiting AdventistMission.org, then click on videos at the top. And finally, for today's episode, let's turn to David Trim for a look at Adventist history. This week, we hear about the life and service of James I. Robinson. This week in Adventist history focuses on one life of service, that of a missionary, an educator, and a church administrator. On December 10, 1961, James I. Robeson died at the age of 73. 
James had been born on May 14, 1888. In 1910, age 22, he married Ina May Marcus. They both taught at Loma Linda Junior Academy for three years and then went as missionaries to South Africa, serving there for seven years at worker training institutions in the Cape Province and Natal. James and Ina returned home in 1921. He completed his BA studies at Pacific Union College, graduating in 1922. And for the next four years, James was principal of the new La Sierra School in Southern California. But in 1926, the Robesons accepted a call to serve in Africa again. For eight years, James was secretary, or director as we would say now, of the Sabbath School and the Home Missionary Departments of the Southern African Division. And he edited the church paper, the Southern African Sentinel. In 1935, he became secretary treasurer of the Zambezi Union Mission, but just a year later, he accepted a call to serve as division secretary of the Northern European Division with its headquarters in Britain. After five years' service, while war clouds gathered in Europe, in 1941, James and Ina took their two daughters, Esther and Marjorie, back to the United States, where James taught at Walla Walla College for five years. The 1946 General Conference session elected him an Associate Secretary of the General Conference. He served in this position for 12 years, and this photograph of him from 1953 is taken just over halfway through his time as GC Associate Secretary. James became a recognized expert on church structure, and from 1956 to 58 was a special assistant to G General Conference President Reuben Figure. In 1958, James retired with Ina to St. Helena, California. Sadly, they only enjoyed retirement together for three years before he passed away. Its families, like the Robesons, careful and conscientious educators and administrators, serving on multiple continents without much attention from the rest of the church, who laid the foundations of today's truly worldwide church. That was this week in Adventist history. Thanks for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We'd love to hear from you. Send us your feedback and tell us how your church is making a difference in its community. Be sure to capture plenty of video footage and photos, then write up a summary of the event's important details, and feel free to send full video reports as well. You can reach us by sending an email to annvideo11 at gmail.com. Before we say goodbye, here's some good news from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 26 and 27. The passage says, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless grounds. And he who searches our hearts know the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit Adventist.news for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless. Take care.